I can't believe it. Another show's got an anniversary today, so I'm about to give you another TV log. Can you believe it? it's been 35 years since we got to see a show about a girl who apparently gets two fathers? Or should I say dads? Here we go with my, my latest TV log on My Two Dads, which is celebrating its 35th anniversary. This is a Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews TV log. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D. Back again with another TV log. Today I'm going to be bringing to you another show that is turning 35 this year. Of course, the other day I did DuckTales, which turned 35. But this time I'm about to tackle a show that's a sitcom. This is a show I never did take the time to watch when I was a kid, but growing up, I finally caught the show in reruns, and, well, this makes, makes another show that I've actually seen completely alongside shows I've seen like Small Wonder, Punky Brewster, Out of This World, Charles in Charge, Mr. Belvedere, Silver Spoons, which that is coming up later on. Look for the TV log of that coming soon. Rags to Ridges. And this show right here, prepare yourselves, cause you're about to see this, to hear about the story of a gal who is about to get to be with two fatherly figures. As I bring to you my two dads. My two dads was an American sitcom that originally premiered on NBC on this day, which of course was September twentieth, nineteen eighty-seven. The show was produced by TriStar Television, along with Michael Jacobs Productions, who of course would later go on to produce Dinosaurs. Now, I also want to say that Michael Jacobs also had recently worked on Charles in Charge as well. And also, he would work on not just Dinosaurs, but Boy Meets World as well. So, that's pretty good. And then, well, and later on, Columbia Pictures Television took over for the rest of the series run. The show was distributed by Televentures. Now, the series begins after Marcy Bradford, the mother of 12-year-old Nicole Bradford, has died. The two men who had competed for Marcy's affections in Key West during the summer of 1974 Michael Taylor, a successful financial advisor, and Joy Harris, a struggling artist, former friends who grew to hate one another or their mutual interest in the woman, are awarded joint custody of Nicole. Each week on the show, the mix-ups and trials of two single men raising a teenage daughter provide the stories. Judge Margaret W. Wilbur, a family court judge who gave custody of Nicole to the two, frequently visits the new family, and she bought the building in which Joy lived, so is now the live-in landlord. Michael originally has his own condo uptown, but in the first episode, but in episode two, Nicole stages a sit in at school because she feels she had no home, and the men decide it is there to all live in one home, and they chose Joy's law. Now, Nicole's actual paternity is never revealed on the show, but in one episode, Michael and Joy, after a falling out, have a DNA test to determine which of them is Nicole's biological father. And the test is conducted against Nicole's wishes. She is happier not knowing who her true father is, and she destroys the results before opening them. And Michael and Joy later resolve their differences and reconcile. Judge Wilbur looks at the results, but throws them away without revealing them to the audience. The series comes to an end when Joy reconnects with, her, with a former girlfriend named Sarah and eventually moves to San Francisco to live with her and her daughter, Grace. 
He stays in contact with Nicole, Michael, and Judge Wilbur, all of whom remain in New York. Nicole writes a letter to Joy in which she makes reference to going out to San Francisco to visit. And she ends by saying that no matter what or where he is or who he is with, she would always be happy with him as one of her two dads. Anyway, after only three seasons... And with a total of 60 episodes produced and aired, the show came to an end in April of 1990. Now, the show started out for one big season with 22 episodes, but then it was absent for a while. But however, in January of 89, it returned for its second season with only a mere 16 episodes. And then in September of that same year, it was picked up for a third season and ran until April 3rd. Now, after the series ended, USA later got to air the show throughout the 90s and again the early 2000s. But I'd say that was the only network I know of that re-aired them until Antenna TV picked it up later on. Now, you can catch the show on either that or its spinoff channel, Rewind TV. Check your local listings. Now, Tubi also had the series. I don't know if they still have it. If they do, you can check out there. I have revisited all the episodes, including ones I didn't take the time to watch. It has been released on physical media as well. But, however, unfortunately, the first two seasons were only released through Shout Factory, and Mill Creek released a 10-episode Best of Set with episodes of the first two seasons. The third season was never released. Anyway... Now, our main cast of characters include Paul Reiser, who had recently appeared in the first two Beverly Hills Cop films, as well as Aliens, plays Michael. Greg Evigan plays Joy Harris, who, and Evigan also happens to sing the theme song to this, which is You Can Count On Me. Now, it starts out a little more up-tempo, but then it's eased down a little bit for the second season and the third season. Playing Nicole is Stacey Keenan, who would later go on to star on the 90s sitcom Step by Step. Playing, playing Judge Margaret W. Wilbur is Florence Stanley, who would later go on to voice Grandma Ethel in Dinosaurs. Vi Rabisi, as he's credited as, but that's Giovanni Rabisi to you, plays Corey Kupkis, a friend of Nicole's, and, well, I suppose, a little love interest of hers. And then there's Dick Butkus, big-time football star, plays Ed Klawicki, who runs the restaurant in the building Joy's at, called Klawicki's. Now, it would be changed for the third season, called The Judge's Court, which of... Um, Judge Wilbur takes over of all in that. Klawicki was only in the first two seasons. Next up, Chad Allen, who recently had appeared on Punky Brewster, and he also appeared in a short-lived NBC dramedy called Our House. Plays Zach Nichols in the second and third season. Amy Hathaway plays Nicole's best friend, Shelby Haskell, also in the second and third seasons. Zach was actually Nicole's other little love interest. And he and Corey competed for Nicole's affections. Yes. Let me see. So anyway, yeah. Now, later, later on, the show also had crossovers with another NBC show, and that was Night Court. Now, um, Florence Stanley played her role of Judge Wilbur in an episode, and in turn, Richard Mull guest starred as his Night Court character, Bull Shannon, in the episode Playing With Fire, protecting Judge Wilbur from a recently released criminal that she had sent to prison years before. Now then, I will tell you that this also won some awards at the Young Artist Awards. 
In AEA, it won the award for Most Promising New Fall Television Series, and Stacey Kim won Best Young Actress Featured and Co-Starring Support and Recurring Role in a Comedy or Drama Series or Special. And the following year, Chad Allen won Best Young Actor Guest Starring in a Drama or Comedy Series, same award. And in AEA, My Two Dads won the Favorite New TV Comedy Program at the People's Choice Awards. So... Now you know all about my two dads, but I might as well go ahead and show you a shot of what from the cast looks like. Give me a second. Now here's a look at the cast. This is what it was for the first two seasons. Up there you see Dick Buckus, there's Greg Evigan and Paul Reiser, there's Florence Stanley, Stacey Keenan, and young Giovanni Rabisi. And here's a look Again, Stacey Kim, there's Ryan Rabisi again. Up there's Chad Allen and Amy Hathaway. Now you see what they are. This That's just a little something from a, the magazine team beat I found on the net, so don't mind the, this pick. <laughs> so now you know about My Two Dads. Yes, it's a good show. I really liked it, despite its short say, but even so, I think it's really a fun show, and I really do like it. Uh, and again, this is another A show I actually watched completely of. Well, an A sitcom, anyway. So anyway, My Two Dads, it's just so good. I think you'll really like it if you give it a shot. But if you have seen My Two Dads, let me know what you think of the show in the comments section below. And if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And next time I'll be bringing to you yet another TV long, and it's another show that is to turn 35, and it's the animated series Beverly Hills Teens. So be ready for that. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out my TV logs for these other sitcoms of the 80s. In the upper left-hand corner is the TV log I did on Punky Brewster. The upper right-hand corner is the TV log I did on Mr. Belvedere. Or if you would like, see my previous TV log on the original Disney's DuckTales. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.